Hi everyone, um, my name is Maria and I'm joining you today from CALM, the Campaign Against Living Miserably. I'd like to start by thanking everyone at the Pipeline Industry Guild for having me here today. Um, we are here to talk about how CALM can provide a little bit of help to get you through these weird times. I think we can all agree that um, six months ago, no one could have imagined a world where we were living under lockdown and there was a global pandemic and that the effect that this has had on our lives has been profound. Um, if you're struggling with it, you're certainly not alone. And I think it's really important that we look at um, just a few things uh, that CALM can help you with over this time. Uh, these are um, around sort of both the sort of working from home changes and also personal life as well. Um, for those of you who don't know who the Campaign Against Living Miserably are, uh, we are a charity. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about what it is that we do to kick us off. Uh, you may have seen me speak before as you've kindly invited me to speak at a couple of your um, branch dinners, both the Northern Branch Dinner before Christmas and the National Dinner in March, which was actually the last social gathering I went to. So uh, we're very grateful as a charity for all the support that you've given us. And I'm very grateful personally for my last uh, big night out before lockdown. Um, so let me start by telling you, uh, if you don't know, who CALM are. So uh, CALM is the Campaign Against Living Miserably, and we are leading a movement against suicide. Uh, we do this in a number of ways, um, although a lot of our work at the moment is on pause because of the pandemic. Um, but I'm going to talk about what it is that we're focusing on right now. Uh, so the reason CALM exists is because around 6,500 people die by suicide every year in the UK. Uh, that equates to 125 a week, uh, which is uh, 18 a day um, on average. 75% of all suicides are male, which when you take all of that into account, it makes suicide the single biggest killer of men under 45 in the UK. Um, and one of the reasons that we're so grateful to be working with the Pipeline Industry Guild is because um, by industry, the construction industry has the highest rate of suicide. Um, so we know that this is an area um, that you know we really wanna be able to support you and all of your colleagues with. So our main service, and one that is still thriving under the current situation, is our helpline and web chat service. Uh, this is available from 5 p.m. till midnight, seven days a week, and it's there for anyone who needs to talk about any of life's problems. Uh, we also help people at crisis point. Uh, so regardless of whether you're just finding that you're struggling um, sort of for a day or for a month, or you are feeling suicidal, or calm is there for you. This service is anonymous, confidential, and non-judgmental, and we use highly trained paid staff, which allows us to be very interventionist um, and also solution focused. Um, we give non-clinical advice because most people who contact us don't necessarily have a mental health problem or uh, don't have a diagnosed one, or perhaps wouldn't present with a diagnosable mental health um, problem if they had one to their GP. And that's true of people who take their own lives as well. Not everybody who takes their own life is in the midst of a sort of mental health um, issue. So we're there to make sure that everybody, no matter their problem, has the support that they need. Um, and we're also more than a listening service. We are solution focused. So if you're somebody who perhaps wants more than just the opportunity to offload, would like some sort of practical support of how you can amend the current situation that you're in, um, we're there to help with that. And our services are open to everyone. We obviously focus some of our work and campaigns around men as they are three times more likely to take their own life, but our services are for absolutely anyone who needs them. So that's a little bit about CALM, but I'm gonna move quite swiftly on to why we're here, and that's to see if I can give you any help about how to get through these weird times. Um, and I think that it's pretty safe to say that one of the, the biggest things that's changed for all of us is that we're all now working from home. Um, and I sort of wondered how to start this and thought, how, wh what does working from home look like for most people? So, so I Googled it and thought, what does it look like? And apparently this is what working from home looks like. These are some great stock images I found. Um, I'd like to highlight the woman in the center who has found time to arrange all of her fruit to look beautiful behind her. Um, the woman with the baby who uh, the child seems perfectly well behaved during whatever piece of work she's doing, not a distraction at all. Um, everybody in these images seems to have a great desk set up, um, you know, room in their house to have a separate place to work. And also apparently if you've got a spouse or partner around, in, they might even join you on your lap for a lunch break. So as you can see, working from home looks like a breeze. Uh, everybody looks really happy and I'm sure everybody's finding it really easy from these pictures. So, you know, why am I here? I think it's safe to say that we all know that this is not what working from home really looks like. Um, 
And actually, I'd like to start by highlighting something about working from home. Um, I'm a very sort of statistical focused person and, and I thought, I wonder what working from home looks like in reality. Um, and before COVID-19, only 30% of UK workers had any experience of working from home. Um, and only 6% of those work from home regularly. That means there was a huge number of people who had either never worked from home at all or had only done so on the odd occasion. And I think we can all agree that working from home, you know, one day because you're waiting for a delivery, or you have something very specific to sort of crack on with, is very different to what we're all experiencing right now. Obviously, the government advice is that everybody who works from home does now. And, and that means there's a lot of people who don't have the uh, tools, the technology, the setup, or the skills to be uh, working from home. And when I say skills to work from home, I don't mean that you're able to connect to a Zoom meeting and your audio works. Um, I mean the sort of emotional and personal skills to work from home well without causing additional stress to yourself or to others. Um, this is a really great quote that most of you might have seen it. It went viral on Twitter and I just think it's really important. So this person says, you're not working from home, you're at home during a crisis trying to work. I think that this is really important and something that we should all be remembering day to day. Um, I personally write and I would tend to work from home um, if I had a big writing piece on so that I could crack on without any interruptions and those days would be so productive for me and now I'm working from home every day now it's my day-to-day -day normality it's not the same I don't have the same level of output or productivity I certainly find um, that I'm even more easily distracted um, and I think it's important to remember that this isn't classic working from home um, your child if you have one in the house probably isn't just sitting there quietly letting you work um, you know, you can't even necessarily have the things in your house that you need because getting a hold of things with all the shops closed isn't as easy. Um, there might be a lot more people in your house than there normally would be, um, causing distraction and disruption. And generally, this isn't a typical working from home situation. So I think it's really important that we aren't too hard on ourselves and we don't beat ourselves up if we find that we're not necessarily getting the most out of every single second of every single day. So I've got some working from home tips for you. Um, we're actually, uh, we've got a lot of these tips from our helpline uh, manager. So our helpline and web chat service has always been remote working. It means um, that we were incredibly lucky when the pandemic hit because we didn't have a situation where we had um, a whole workforce of people in a call center that needed relocating. Um, everybody could carry on with work um, as usual, as much as possible. Um, and that obviously was really helpful for, for minimal disruption to our service, but it also means that we've got over a decade of experience uh, within that service of working from home well. Um, so they've shared some tips and there's also some that I've popped in here too. Um, they seem quite common sense, but again, I just think it's, it's worth remembering these things because it's much easier to forget right now. Um, so create a space that will be your desk, not your favorite TV spot. If you've got a really comfy chair in your living room, it might be tempting to work from there but then you might find that when you sit in it in the evening to read a book, watch some TV or chill out, that um, you can't stop thinking about work or can't switch off. Um, get up, shower, get dressed and act like it's a normal working day. I think that's a really common sense one, but we've had a lot of our routine stripped away from us. Um, and I think it's really important to try and keep some routine in your day. Have work and non-work clothes, as this allows you to take work off at the end of the day. Um, this is one our helpline workers find really handy. Um, obviously, our service closes at 12, so most people's shifts don't end till after midnight. Um, that means that they're then sort of, you know, trying to get to sleep with a lot of work thoughts on their head and having different players that they can physically take off and sort of take the job off. Um, it's that similar to that time that you'd normally spend like decompressing um, on your commute so that you're not thinking of work. Um, gives that sort of similar effect. Um, and obviously if our helpline workers were working in their pyjamas and going straight to bed after their shifts, they might find that that sort of work, uh, the difficult conversations that they've had during their shift um, are sort of still rattling around their mind and preventing them from sleeping. Um, this one is my personal favorite as um, it's definitely something I've had to learn to do. So shut your computer or phone away in a room or cupboard that you won't go into for the evenings and weekends. Um, I'm really bad at just checking my work emails one more time at seven o'clock, eight o'clock. And if 
someone's sent me something that's a small task, I might think, okay, well, I'll just get that done tonight because I can't go out and I've got nothing else to do. Um, and surely then tomorrow I'll have one less thing to do. But actually tomorrow rolls around and I feel like I haven't stopped working for 24 hours and I'm exhausted um, and much less effective. So obviously if you had left your computer at work, you wouldn't commute back in to get it. So um, it's really good if you have a separate work laptop or phone to shut it away and tell yourself that you're not going to be looking at it until the day starts the next day um, or after the weekend. Obviously, um, if you're working off a personal laptop, make sure the sort of equivalent would be to make sure that all of your work applications are shut and just try and be really restrained about not opening them again. Um, and lastly, take advantage of the extra time in your day from not commuting. Go for a walk or do some exercise um, and ideally leave the house and get some air. Obviously, that's not possible for everybody. Um, leaving the house is something that um, we are being encouraged to do for exercise and essentials. But if you are someone who is um, shielding or self-isolating for your own or someone else's protection or somebody in your house has symptoms, so you are self-isolating for those 14 days, um, it's obviously important that you don't leave the house. So in those cases, um, there's loads of online um, exercises that you classes that you can be taking part in. Um, one of the great things that have, has come out of this crisis is seeing people adapt. Um, and there is a lot of um, sort of physical classes, be it like yoga or dance, uh, just stretching, anything that would previously have been in person and it's now online. So do take advantage of those. And of course, if you can get some air, do. Um, and obviously, um, if that sort of extra time you are missing your daily commute, Twitter has the answer for you. This is how you can recreate your commute so that you're not missing it too much. Um, so a lot of what I've talked about is about physical space, um, the sort of setup of how you're working. Um, and I want to just come back to those glossy stock images of how perfect everyone's workspaces look. And remind you all that your workspace doesn't have to look like this for it to work for you. You don't have to even be at a desk for it to work for you. It's about finding something that um, sets you up right for your work day and then allows you to sort of decompress afterwards. Um, and Karma all about making sure that people recognize the difference between a shiny image on Instagram and how somebody might actually be feeling behind that picture. So I wanted to sort of do the same with my working from home experience and share with you, um, as obviously you can only see me right now from my shoulders up, um, what I actually look like when I work from home. So this is me working from home. This picture was taken yesterday. Um, I'm in my gym kit because I knew that I wanted to go for a run that day and I know that by the end of a work day I can be quite tired. Um, and that means that if I have to get changed to go for a run, I'll often use that as an excuse not to. So for me, I've worked out over the last few weeks that on days that I want to go for a long run or a walk, if I'm already in my gym kit, I'm much more likely to go. Uh, so that works really well for me. I'm also quite clearly sitting on the floor. Um, one of the benefits of this is it forces me to get up and go for a little walk um, sort of every hour or so, which is something that we should all be doing, something we should have all been doing when we were in offices but definitely something that people generally aren't very good at doing. So find what works for you. And if that's a quiet space in your house on the floor, that's totally fine. It doesn't have to be what everybody perceives as this sort of perfect image. It can just be the thing that works for you. Obviously another huge impact of this has been the sort of social isolation aspect, um, particularly for people who are living alone. Um, I think that it's really important both for work and personal life to stay connected. Um, I'm going to focus a little bit on the best ways to stay connected at work to start with, uh, since we're talking about working from home. Um, and obviously, as we're all on Zoom, we know that calls like this are a great way to connect with people and to see people's faces. Here is another fantastic stock image of a video conference. And as you can see, everyone is really happy, really alert and really engaged. And I can only assume that's because it's the first meeting that they've had all week via video conference, because frankly, after two of these, I look pretty tired and I'm pretty distracted. Um, I think it's really important to remember that while um, we need to see each other's faces and we need to stay connected, that these sorts of meetings can actually be quite exhausting. Um, there's actually been some research that's come out that says that uh, you have to work harder to concentrate in these meetings. Uh, and also to read people's body languages uh, via a video. So 
your brain's actually working a lot harder in the same space, which means that they, if you coming off these meetings and feeling really tired, you're certainly not alone. It's, it's really common. Um, so while I'm going to sing the praises of this media as a way to stay connected with people, I'd also like to sort of warn you all that it's all about balance. This is another tweet that I found particularly interesting. Um, it happened, this uh, was tweeted just after lockdown happened and it said, I guess we're about to find out which meetings could have been emails after all. Um, I think we've all sat in meetings um, in real life and thought that definitely could have been an email. And I think right now is a time that we really need to recognize that not everything needs to be done via a meeting. Um, it might be great for you to see someone's face um, and it might be the only video conference meeting you have that day. But if somebody else has been invited to six and they have been um, sort of simultaneously away from their desk and stuck in front of their computer all day, uh, not being able to do their work, they might not, you might not be getting the best out of them in that meeting. You might get more from them if you can update them and give them an action via an email. So it's all about that balance. Make sure that you're staying connected with your teams, but also think about, is this definitely the right medium for what I need to do? So a few more top tips for working from home. As I said, utilize video conferencing technology um, and have effective meetings. It is a fantastic way of working. Find out what works for your team and don't be scared to try it and scrap it if it isn't working. And um, when Palm first moved to working from home, we had a lot of daily check-ins, but then as some of our projects kicked off, there were people who were sort of uh, had a, a team check-in in the morning and then a wider team check-in and maybe a couple of project check-ins. And by the end of the day, had spent most of the day in meetings. And um, so we've been sort of reviewing weekly and adapting how we work. And it's fine to say, this thing that worked for us this week while we were settling into working from home isn't working two weeks in or three weeks in so let's change it up and um, speaking sort of face to face via video conference or over the phone can often avoid misunderstandings i think we know that just from our day-to-day -day life anyway that uh, tone on text can be misconstrued um, but also keep notes because lockdown isn't improving our memory and um, humans rely a lot on um, cues uh, sort of, uh, physical cues to remember things i'm sure you've all done that thing where you've walked in a room and suddenly remembered something or walked into a room and suddenly forgotten something uh, that's just to do with how our brain uh, works and it means that if we aren't physically getting up to go to a meeting and we're not physically seeing people's faces or sitting in a particular space together we are less likely to remember things so um nobody wants to be micromanaging at this point but equally keeping meeting notes and action notes and sharing them after these video conferences is, is a really important thing to do um, and remember that everyone's tense including yourself so read back that email for tone before sending it it's really easy to misconstrue some construe someone when you're stressed out or they're stressed out so um, it might be a time to just think about um, i'm writing this really quickly have has it come across as a bit uh, Sort of tense a bit sort of barky do i need to to roll back my language a bit um, and equally if you get an email from someone that seems a little bit uh, snappy maybe think that it, that's probably not what they actually meant um, and, and think about how you can um, sort of then maybe that's a great time to sort of pick up the phone or have that video call just to make sure that you're on the same page um, but it's not just about working from home, like granted that does take up most of our week uh, for most of us, but it's also about looking after yourself. Um, and uh, these are some top tips for that. Switching off the news, I think is really important. Um, it feels, uh, I think a bit wrong for some people to not be keeping entirely on top of everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, and I think people often fear that they'll be uh, perceived badly for refusing to engage with the media. I think while it's really important that we do follow the news enough to know um, what we should and shouldn't be doing to um, help the NHS, help this global pandemic um, and help us all stay safe and healthy. Um, it's also really important to recognise that too much bad news can have a profound impact on your mental well-being. And um, also think about how you consume the news. Um, would it be better if you just gave yourself sort of 20 minutes a day where you said, I'll catch up on what the briefing said, I'll see what's been going on in the world. And that's it, that's my whole daily engagement with what's going on, um, because otherwise I feel overwhelmed. I think it's important to give your permi yourself permission to switch it off. And um, also, I know that a lot of um, sort of desk-based workers would use uh, news sites as a way to sort of provide some light relief between tasks or meetings. You know, you might click onto a news site, read a couple of articles, 
there isn't a huge amount of light relief in the news at the moment. So um, if that was a habit that you were doing, it now might be the time to break it. Also staying connected. We talked about this in terms of work, but it's really important in terms of uh, your social life too. Um, we have amazing tools that we're using for work, such as Zoom, and uh, they can be used in your personal life as well. Most of these things, um, even if you're using them under a paid version for work, have a free version, um, or your work might be totally happy for you to be using uh, your licensed version. Um, stay connected, reach out to friends that you maybe haven't spoken to in a while, speak more to friends that you, know, you miss. It's a time when I think it's really important that everybody recognises that um, we are all in this together and reaches out to people. And then keeping up the daily routine. We obviously talked about this from a work sense, but it is really important, although really boring and mundane, to do things like staying on top of your cleaning um, and tidying around your house. Uh, the environment that you live in has a huge impact on your mental well-being. Um, and we feel like because there's all the time in the world, we should be able to just um, sort of crack on and find time to clean. But actually, the motivation might not be there. So you can break it down into smaller tasks, do things that make yourself feel productive, even if it's only really little. And just remind yourself that um, as much as it's a sort of OK to have a night where you do absolutely nothing, if you can stay on top of some of your sort of routines, it will make a real difference to you. Most importantly, if you're struggling, talk to Calm. We are here for you. We are here for you no matter what the problem is. We're here for your friends, your family, your colleagues, anyone you know that might be struggling. This is our website. And as you can see, there is a section for getting support. There's support if you need help, if you're worried about someone else, or if you've been bereaved by suicide. And um, the information about bereavement from suicide can also be uh, very useful for any sudden bereavement. Um, so do check that out if it's something that will help you or someone that you know. We are here for you no matter what. We have a phone line and a web chat that's open 365 days a year from five till midnight. It is confidential, it's anonymous. And um, the web chat is particularly good if you found yourself in a house where you perhaps don't have the privacy to make a phone call that you did before. So um, we are here for you. Please do make use of our services and please do tell people about it if you think it might help them. I now want to just take a minute to talk about Calm um, and what's happening with us during this time because uh, we are all in this together. Calm have been affected just as much as everyone, I'm sure all of your businesses. and um, have been affected and, and Calm is a charity that's also um, had a huge impact and as you can imagine our biggest impact is people needing our services and um, so uh, there was a 37 percent increase in contacts to our helpline and web chat the week strict measures were introduced and um, unsurprisingly we did also see a further spike on Thursday uh, when those measures were extended um, it's a strange thing, actually, because um, we all expected those measures to be extended. We'd already been told by the media that that's what the briefing was going to say. Yet somehow hearing it really hit hard and a lot of people, myself included, really struggled with hearing the news, even though I already knew it was what I was going to hear. So this crisis is having a real impact on us in all sorts of ways. Um, and it's really important that we're here for people. We are seeing demand for our services at unprecedented levels for Calm. Um, and we're having a lot of people contact us who have uh, contacting us for the first time who have never experienced isolation or anxiety um, or any of you know the struggles that they're having before. There's lots of people who are more worried than ever about their finances and their job security. And we've had a huge increase of frontline staff, uh, including NHS workers, contacting us. So it's really important that what we do is we maintain this service and make sure that we're there for people who need us. As you can imagine, we have also taken a real hit to our uh, income, which makes running a service like this very difficult. As I mentioned before, we use uh, trained paid staff um, so that we can provide this very high level of service. Um, but that doesn't mean that we need money to run the service. And um, that is drying up. And uh, almost 60% of our CALM's income comes from uh, public fundraising, um, essentially events um, and sort of, uh, challenges that people do for us. And, none of those can take place at the moment. We have implemented an emergency strategy and we're doing all that we can to ensure that the yeah, helpline and web chat is maintained. Um, we don't use any capacity on it. Uh, we've actually furloughed some head office staff um, to allow us to ensure that we can keep that service running. So um, it is our number one priority and will remain so. But Calm is all about asking for help. 
I have encouraged all of you to seek help if you need it. And I'm going to take a moment, if that's okay, to ask you all for a little bit of help. Um, it costs just eight pounds for Calm to answer a, a web chat or a phone call to our service, um, which um, depending on where you worked and where you ate for your lunch might be equivalent of a day's lunch or a day's commute. Um, it's not a lot, but it makes a huge difference to the person um, who, whose call or web chat has been answered. Um, so if you feel able to help Calm, there are a number of ways that you can do so, um, and um, only one of which involves you putting your hand in your pocket. So I will start with that one. And um, if you've saved any money on your lunches or your commute, please consider donating a small amount to Calm um, because it will make a real difference. Right now, um, we need funding more than ever. And um, if you can spare any money, please, please do help us. Um, but there are other ways. So uh, we are very lucky at Calm that we have had some incredible support come off the back of the uh, speeches that we've done at the um, the Northern Branch Dinner and the National Dinner, which has included companies um, offering support um, and also then giving us an avenue to support their own staff, which is incredible for us. Obviously, we know it's an incredibly high risk group. Um, so are you linked to a company that can support us? Um, please, if you are, do get in touch. Same uh, goes for your company. Uh, uh, work with any charitable trusts. Uh, please do get in touch. We'd, we'd love any support that we can get at the moment. Um, but aside from that, can you share our posts on social media? If you are on Twitter, if you're on um, Facebook or Instagram, uh, we're posting loads of content at the moment to show people how they can get help. Um, and the more people that see that and the more people we reach, uh, the better. Because right now, there are people who need our support that have perhaps never heard of Calm because they've never needed help before. I mean, it's really important that they know where to go. Um, I don't have a slide for this, but I'd just like to say, um, also, there's uh, one more thing that you can do, which is more for you than Calm, but it's a lot of fun. Um, Dave, the TV channel, has been showing um, the Comedy Against Living Miserable series. Two of these were filmed before lockdown. The third one has been postponed, but the first two have now aired. One was last night and one was a few weeks ago, and they're both available on Catch Up. They are really funny. They have got a great lineup of comedians, but they're also just really real. Um, and I really recommend watching them. It's a great take on comedy and mental health. So thank you very much, everyone. That's all from me. Um, for those of you that were in the live session, you will know that we uh, did a Q&A afterwards. Um, the only question that was asked is would this video and the slides be shared? Unfortunately, I had forgotten to press record, so I'm recording this separately and it will be being shared online. If you have any questions, if there's anything that we can do, please do get in touch. My email address is up on the screen and I'd really welcome hearing from you um, if there's anything at all that I can help with. Um, and in the meantime, just please take care of yourself, look after yourselves and your family. Um, remember, we're all in this together and no one is finding this easy. Um, so if you're having a bad day, you're not on your own. Um, and just again, thank you to the Pipeline Industry Guild for giving Calm this opportunity and also for all the support you've given us um, over the last year. Thank you very much.